This video is sponsored by Audible. You can get your first audiobook for free, plus two Audible originals when you try Audible for 30 days. You can visit audible.com slash tibbies or text tibbies to 500 500. Hello and welcome to another exam unboxing video. You might have wondered in the past why I call it an unboxing if there's no box, but today I've solved that problem and I have a box. I'm pretty excited to show you what's inside here, which is an exam from 1959, which was used to select astronauts for the Mercury program. Now Mercury was the first US attempt at crewed spaceflight and they aimed to put someone in orbit around the Earth. As you can imagine, becoming a Mercury astronaut um, would have had pretty stringent requirements and been pretty competitive to get into. So let's open up this box and have a look at what they had to do. So let's open this up and have a look inside. We've got this document in here, which is actually a big report that's been released from the US military officers all about this exam. So here's the document here. You can see that it's the Project Mercury Candidate Evaluation Program. And there were 31 astronaut candidates who undertook all these exams. And they came from a background of being military test pilots. They had to be aged between 25 and 40. They had to be shorter than 5 foot 11 and have a background of a STEM degree. Although a couple of them didn't meet that requirement of the STEM degree, but they managed to schmooze their way in anyway. Of those 31 candidates, uh, seven ended up being selected to be Mercury astronauts. There's a link in the description to this full exam, so you can read, it goes into like, a lot of details and a, a good insight into what really makes up the right stuff for an astronaut, because the committee have several reports and summaries that they also detail here. So you can follow along if you'd like to. I haven't printed out all 147 pages here, but I will go through some of the tests. They're all designed to test the stresses that an astronaut might go through if they were on a mission. And those um, stresses, as you can see from the timetable, could be psychological as well as physical. Um, so if you look at, say, Monday, we've got a day filled with some psych tests in the morning. We've got acceleration tests. We've got physical fitness tests, we've got isolation and complex behavioural simulator and also just doing a lot of medical testing. Uh, they've got a full day and then they've got a little break for dinner and then a nice dessert of some more psychological testing. It's a pretty intense schedule. Uh, this was one full week of this exam but there is a lot of preparation that these candidates needed to do to be able to prove themselves. These are a couple of pictures from the acceleration tests where they would essentially exert the astronauts to high accelerations or g-forces and then measure when they blacked out. You can see here they would accelerate them, then take some measurements, accelerate them again in various positions, uh, and then they would rank them and give scores to how each candidate did, and I guess the longer you can go without blacking out, the better. This particular part I found pretty interesting. It's an intelligibility measure. And for this, they, I guess, really practically wanted to know how easy it would be for an astronaut to communicate back down to mission control and how easy it would be to understand them. So they gave them a list of words to read out and then played those words to a panel of listeners. But they mixed in plenty of noise, so it was a little difficult to hear them. And then they did some statistics on which candidates were easier to understand. A very practical measure, I guess. This one here is pretty cool. We've got the effect of noise on the ability to perform addition. You know, noise is capable of interfering with effective human activity. This test is designed to measure the effects of high noise levels on the performance of a simple mental task. So with an intense noise of 145 decibels being produced by a siren, the candidates had to add up a string of numbers until it reached the total. So adding up these ones until it reached 35 and then put a dash on, you know, once they'd reached 35. 
maybe not too hard on its own, but certainly difficult under the stress of dealing with all this noise. So here's a picture of one of these uh, exams right here, and this is our sound generator. We've got heat tests, which are literally how well a subject can cope with heat. Uh, they're talking about how space vehicles are expected to heat to sustained high temperatures, especially during the period of re-entry. Uh, is therefore necessary to see how man can withstand this heat and since some can withstand it better than others they want to know who would be the best so it looks like they were essentially just exerting them to a lot of heat and measuring uh, you know some biological factors maybe how your heart's going you can see this guy is sweating up whilst reading a book there so that's kind of funny i won't talk too much about these biological tests but there's another one here that at least you could try at home which is the harvard step test which seems like you're just stepping up and down from a platform, except you're doing it with a metronome and you know you have to step up on the first second, step down on the second second, and then step up on the third second, continuing that for five minutes. Here's a picture of that step test here. Now we're getting on to the interesting chapter, which is the psychological tests. Now there's a few qualities here that they say they're looking for. Uh, you know, they say, he should have a high level of intelligence with abilities to interpret instruments, perceive mathematical relationships, and maintain spatial orientation. In the Mercury program, there were no female astronauts, I guess, because there were also no female military test pilots at the time. So the language reflects that. But number two, he should demonstrate evidence of sufficient drive and creativity to ensure positive contributions to the development of the vehicle and other aspects of the project as a whole. So those are a couple of things that they're looking for. This one seems interesting. He should not demonstrate evidence of impulsivity. So I guess this is the psychology of having the right stuff, as they say. The psychological tests were taken pretty seriously. It says that the evaluation included 30 hours of psychiatric interviews, psychological tests, and observations of the stressful tests. Um, they were measuring all these sorts of factors here um, through these tests, so all of these aspects of your personality, I guess. Um, and this is how they were actually doing it. So these are the tests they were using, and some of these are still used today. Um, so we've got the raw search test, which is where you try to uh, say what you can find in some ambiguous ink blots. It's apparently able to probe relatively deep into the personality. We're doing a draw a person test. So by drawing male and female human figures, the subject gives information of his body image and feelings about his place in the world. They ask them to complete a bunch of sentences to give further insight into their personalities. A few of these other, I guess, ranging from like multiple choice things. Um, and then down to number 12, which is who am I? The subject is asked to write 20 answers to the question, who am I? This is interpreted predictively to give information on identity and perception of social roles. Then on this page, we have the intellectual tests. So these are essentially how they're measuring the intelligence of the candidates, and they've done it through to at least 12 different kinds of tests. And I've got a few example problems here. Uh, which are supposed to replicate some of these tests. So uh, like we have analogies, um, that's often something that pops up on sort of intelligence tests like this, and we have some examples. So for example, a parallelogram is to an octagon as to what is to quadruped, four, biped, eight, or animal. I'll put the answers to these down in the description so that you have a chance to try them yourself. Another example here is metabolism is to what, as combustion is to locomotive, engine, train, human, or anabolism. After analogies, it says they've got raven progressive matrices. So I've got a couple examples of those. These are things that look similar to what pop up on IQ tests, trying to look at what's going on, find some pattern, and then pick the one that completes the pattern. So that's another example there of one of these matrices. We've got mathematical reasoning tests, engineering analogies, and mechanical comprehension. I guess that's where a background in maybe engineering or something like physics would come in handy. So 
like extending the reach of the crane will shift its what? Total weight, allowable speed, center of gravity, center of buoyancy. Seeing how well you understand essentially physics. Why does the intake valve open on this pump when the piston goes down? Well, there's a few different options to do with where the air pressure is going to be greater. We've got some air force and aviation tests, a measure of academic achievement. Space memory, a test of memory for locating objects in space. Um, spatial orientation as well and spatial visualization. So you can see how those would come in handy in the space uh, to know, you know when, when no direction is up, well, how things are going to rotate. So they give us a clock and they say that's the direction of rotation. So what is the clock going to look like after that rotation? And another one here that undergoes one, two, three different rotations and what the clock is going to look like. The last example I have here is this hidden figures test, uh, an ability of measure to locate a specified form embedded in a mass of irrelevant details. Uh, these ones are kind of tricky, but somewhere in this shape here, you will find one of these shapes in the same orientation. Um, so you can have a little look there, and that is another example of it. In addition to all these intelligence tests, like I said, they're really just trying to test the stress that you would be under, so that's when they have isolation, uh, behavioral and pressure suit tests, uh, which I think can be quite actually a claustrophobic one. On this page here is a picture of the evaluation committee, so this was who they were trying to impress, and these are the people who then wrote up some thoughts about you know who they were actually going to select. There's a few notes here about why they didn't pick particular candidates, one candidate was not entirely sure that he desired to continue on in Project Mercury. One candidate had a heart murmur and one had a very high index of strain as a result of performance on the heat test. They then ranked all of them and, and scored them on each of the tests, which enabled them to come up with a final table of recommendations. I don't know who is who on here, but some of these ultimately went on to be our astronauts. There was some effort made by the committee to do some statistics and finding a correlation between the data they got from these tests and what actually made for a successful mission so that they could improve astronaut selection in the future. There's some notes here that are interesting. They say that number one, psychological stability is the most important consideration in evaluating a candidate. The intelligence, maturity and motivation of a candidate are vital areas to be assessed before rendering a recommendation. Number two is that excellent physiological performance was a secondary consideration in the final committee recommendations. So no matter how strong and healthy you are, you really need to pass these intelligence and psychology personality tests that we spoke about. Interestingly enough, when it talks about these stressful physiological tests, maybe that's like the heat test, the acceleration or the pressure suit, what they were really looking at was the interpretation of the psychological response to that stress test. Um, it says that uh, whenever a subject terminated a severe test for a psychological reason, he was not recommended by the committee. Maybe if you pass out, it's fine, but if you um, want to terminate for psychological reasons, that is a mark against you. So I hope that's been a little bit of insight into how these sorts of decisions were made and how astronauts were actually chosen. I've gained a lot of insight recently into modern astronaut selection by listening to Chris Hadfield's audiobook, An Astronaut's Guide to Life on Earth, where he talks a lot about his own preparation and journey to becoming an astronaut. Things might have changed a little bit since the Mercury days. If anything, space flights might be a bit longer. You could be on the ISS for months at a time. But these psychological factors, I think, are even more important to test in that case. You need to be able to live in cramped conditions and work with other people for a long time. If you would like to listen to An Astronaut's Guide to Life on Earth or any other title on Audible, then you can go to audible.com slash tibbies or if you're based in the US, you can text TIBBIES to 500, 500 and sign up for a free 30-day membership.
members get one free audiobook every month but they also get access to two audible originals which are these exclusive titles from a broad range of storytellers I'm actually really excited to have Audible as a sponsor for this video because I do believe it's a really great product. I have the app on my phone and I listen to audiobooks when I go walking or I use the sleep timer and listen to the end of a chapter as I'm going to bed. So thank you Audible and thank you for watching.